So yes, as uh, Dr. Deependra has already mentioned for us, proximal focal femoral deficiency is now uh, known by a broad category of terms known as congenital femoral deficiency. Okay, so uh, congenital uh, femoral deficiency is another word for PFFD. Uh, in broader aspects, but uh, I don't think this has come into uh, a regular orthopedic uh, nomenclature yet. So your exams and uh, the examiners by themselves will ask you what is a PFFD rather than asking what is a congenital femoral deficiency. Okay, so uh, what is PFFD? Okay, it is a, a diverse group of conditions which are all categorized by having a congenital transverse deficiency of the femur where the femur is globally smaller and demonstrates a, a proximal deformity at the hip joint okay so this is not just one particular type many many different diverse varieties are present okay so the spectrum of presentation is wide and it involves differences not just in the bone and the joints but also in the soft tissues, the neurovascular structures, etc. Okay, so uh, when we talk about this particular problem, that's PFFD, we are not just looking at the hip joint. Okay, so you could also be looking at a short femur with a fibular hemimelia, which could also be a form of PFFD. Okay, so it's not just within the femur, but also in the knee joint, also in the fibula and a tarsal coalition and or ray abnormalities can also be seen with a PFFT. Okay, so given the complexity of a congenital femoral deficiency, care for these patients often requires a lot of experience in complex deformity correction, okay, or deformity reconstruction rather. Okay, so um, PFFT falls into the transverse variety where uh, uh, as you know, this is the Franz and O'Reilly classification where you either have a terminal or intercalary and irrespective of that, CFD, that's congenital femoral deficiency or PFFD falls into the transverse variety where one part is not there at all. Now, this is obvious because this is in the femur. It is not in the forearm or the leg bones where you have a preaxial and a postaxial part. Okay, so this is a transverse type of deficiency where the proximal femur and or the rest of the uh, limb can be deficient. Okay, so congenital femoral deficiencies by themselves can be characterized, uh, categorized into a PFFD that's proximal femur focal deficiency. It could be a diaphyseal problem where the diaphysis is either hypoplastic or aplastic, where there is a congenital short femur, or it could be a distal femoral deficiency where only the distal part is absent. Okay, so this all these three fall into the spectrum of congenital femoral deficiency. Now, this is an extremely rare condition, only 0 0.2 per 10,000 live births. And to talk about the etiology, it is postulated that it could be sporadic due to some maternal exposure to either trauma, ischemia, toxins or viruses, generally between the fourth to eighth week of pregnancy, because that's the time where the hip and the proximal femur develop. Apart from that, there are other uh, etiologies. However, none of them have been proved. In a few conditions, even familial cases of congenital femoral deficiency and or other limb deficiencies have been seen. Now, coming to the, the clinical features, the first and foremost clinical feature or the more, one of the most important clinical feature happens to be leg length or limb length discrepancy. Okay. Along with this, Along with this, we will be able to see deficiency at the hip. Now, we are talking about deficiency both at the acetabular side as well as on the femoral side. Now, on the acetabular side, we might be looking at either a, a hypoplastic hip, a dysplastic hip, no hip at all, or a normal hip. Okay, it could be the entire spectrum. A normal hip, a hypoplastic hip, a dysplastic hip, and no hip at all. On the femoral side, we could be seeing a normal, normal femoral head. We could be seeing a femoral head or neck, which is in coxa vara. We could be seeing a femoral neck pseudoarthrosis, or we could be seeing a femoral head, which is fused to the acetabulum. All right. 
then we have deficiency lower down okay that could be deficiency both at the femur where you are having either a subtrochantric pseudoarthrosis or and or you could be having a hypoplastic or short femur apart from that you can have deficiency at the knee now at the knee you could either be having a lateral distal femoral hypoplasia a knee cruciate ligament dysplasia or aplasia that means both the cruciates acl pcl or both could be involved the patella could either be dislocated it could be hypoplastic and there is also going to be some amount of rotational instability in these patients now going lower down they could also be having a deficiency in the leg ankle and foot now this would be characterized by having a fibular hemimelia a tarsal coalition at the ankle not the ankle at the subtalar joints and at the foot level there could be ray absence now these ray absence need not just be the fourth and fifth row can also be the second and third row there could be a central deficiency or a lateral deficiency now and apart from all of these things in the lower limbs other limbs are also important and that's why contralateral limb involvement or upper limb involvement also has to be seen because it will help you understand the condition and to chart out how you are going to treat these patients because patients with multiple limb involvements may not do very well with a simultaneous correction and also it will be difficult to rehabilitate these patients adequately okay now coming to the uh, spectrum of these conditions now all of these different x rays that you see are having different acetabulum different sorts of femur different kinds of knee there may or may not be tibia fibula and foot component problems upper extremities may or may not be involved and we do not know how these soft tissues are what muscles are active or absent which uh, artery is present etc so this is an wide spectrum where all of these different things can be involved okay now coming to the evaluation the clinical evaluation uh, is going to be discussed around the gait of the patient how different are the limb lengths is there any pelvic obliquity the range of motion at the hip the range of motion at the knee as well as the stability of the hip and the stability of the knee now after hip and knee we are also going to be talking about the abnormalities of the ankle and foot with absent digits so these are the things that you have to highlight during your clinical assessment and for radiological assessment full length lower extremity radiographs are needed especially ap and lateral views of the hip and femur are needed if there is a fibular hemimelia and or ray deficiency then extra views or added views for the leg ankle and foot may also be needed now ct and mri will help us guide further treatment but it's only for very complex reconstructions where we require them arterial mapping could also help us in understanding the condition as well as knowing which uh, arteries are deficient if we are planning for complex reconstruction such as rotation plasties and for prenatal uh, diagnosis in utero during the second trimester during the uh, anomaly scan this could be found out if both the femur lengths are measured and if there is a difference in femur lengths then it could be pointing towards a congenital femoral deficiency now this is the radiographic assessment where you have a uh, x ray uh, now you need two views for the femur in ap and a lateral view as well as you see the x ray the distal femur is also very hypoplastic over here the uh, if we come from top down the acetabulum is looking very very it's it's literally absent over here we have a very very wide tear drop there is uh, no articulation between the femoral head and the acetabulum because even the femoral head is absent the proximal femur is a tuft of tissue okay is a tuft of tissue we do not see any clear signs of pseudo arthrosis over here okay so this would be a mal developed acetabulum with no femoral head and a tuft in the proximal end of the femur with a dysplastic knee joint okay so uh, again these are the different uh, uh...